Hello, Royal fans, and welcome to another French Fried Trains Minecraft locomotive tutorial. Today, we're going to be learning how to build this Sioux Line GP30. And thanks to Railfan Kyle for requesting that I do a Sioux Line locomotive, although I did decide to change it up and do a GP30 instead of an SD42. So let's get into it here. As my normal, I'm going to build it on the train I already have. So the first thing we do is come in with a dark oak stair to be your coupler and put it right there. Underneath that, we're going to switch to a dark oak fence gate and put that underneath to be the air hose. Come on this locomotive we already have, delete the first two fence gates on each side and replace them with dark oak fence and a row of two coming out to be air hoses and MU cables. Now we're going to switch to blackstone stairs here. And on this next block down, coming across the rail, we need to get a row of five facing right side up in this way. A block of black stone in the middle on the next layer, and then upside down facing forward on each side, coming out to the sides here. Above that, we put a temporary block on the corner and three redstone brick stairs in the middle. Delete your temporary block. Now we come around behind it with black stone blocks, and we make a T-shaped pattern here. Then, down on the rails on each side of the T, we put an end rod. Then back to blackstone block and we make a 5 by 3 coming out to each side of the tracks here. Now we skip a block back from this and put netherite on each rail to be the first set of wheels with an end rod axle. Then we switch to blackstone brick block and we come back and delete that one. We need it in a gap and we need two rows of three. Then, on the ends, we're going to put upside down stairs facing this way on this side in a row of five, and upside down stairs facing this way in a row of five on this side. On the outer edges on the bottom hitbox, we put black stone brick slabs in a row of two on each side. Then behind this, we can put another set of netherite wheels on the rails with an end rod axle. Then switch to dark oak fence gate and open them into the wheels like this. Come around on this side, we also got to place fence gates on here and open those into the wheels as well. Now we switch to regular black stone block and we're going to fill in this middle three coming back here. Bring it all the way to the back of the truck and we come out over these fence gates and then one more row of three. Then we come around underneath it here and another row of three on the bottom. On the outside edge of that bottom one, we put regular black stone stairs upside down facing outwards and we come out in a row of nine. Once we have it nine out, we switch to black stone block, fill in this middle three, and then back to stairs upside down facing outward on this side and another row of nine to complete the edge of the fuel tank. Then we can come around above it with regular black stone block and fill in this middle three coming back to the back of the fuel tank here. Now we're going to do our next truck, so skip a block behind that and get a set of netherite wheels on the rails with an end rod axle. Then switch to black stone brick block and we need it to come one out from the wheels and then a two by three. On this end, we put upside down black stone brick stairs in a row of five this way. And then on this side, upside down black stone bricks in a row of five facing this way. On the outside edges, black stone brick slabs in a row of two on the bottom hip boxes here. Then another set of netherite wheels and an end rod axle. Dark oak fence gates open into the wheels here. And dark oak fence gates opened into the wheels here. Sioux Line's GP30s that they ordered were different than other GP30s in that they had different trucks. Sioux Line was too cheap to want to pay the full price for a brand new GP30 when they came out, so they recycled old trucks and traction motors from old Alco locomotives that they were going to scrap, and they put the Alco trucks on their GP30s. So that's why this truck looks a little different. Now we're going to switch back to a regular black stone block and we'll fill in this middle three coming down to the end of this truck here. 
come out above those fence gates. So it looks something like that. And now, in front of this here, we're going to go ahead and make a 5 by 3 coming out to each side of the railroad tracks. In front of that, we make a T-shaped pattern, and then an end rod down on the bottom on each rail. In front of that, blackstone stairs in a row of five, right side up facing forward on this side here. Then a block of blackstone in the middle, and then two upside down forward facing on each side of that to be the plow. And then above that, we're gonna go ahead and put three redstone brick stairs upside down and facing forward here on the top middle three. Then we use dark oak stair for the coupler and delete the ones we use for placement here. Underneath it, we put a dark oak fence gate for an air hose. Then we turn this way and coming out two on each side of the coupler, we open dark oak fence gates into the plow. Now we're going to take smooth quartz slabs to be our stairs here and coming in this gap on the bottom of each of these blocks, place three smooth quartz slabs coming up to be the stairs. Same thing on this side. There I had a placement mistake. Make sure it's on the bottom of each of the three blocks. And we come down and do the exact same thing on this end of the locomotive. So three slabs coming up to be the stairs here. And three more on this side. Now come down on the side of the trucks here and we're gonna put a hopper in front of each of the wheels. And then same thing on the other side. Swing around and in front of each wheel put a hopper. Now we switch to a dark oak trap door and we're gonna bring a line of trap doors across the top of the truck going from wheel to wheel. Same thing here, so a line of trap doors. And then we gotta do the other side. A line of trap doors here. And a line of trap doors here. Now we pick which side's the front. My front's gonna face out here towards the void. So we come around here on the conductor side. And right here, we're gonna hang a bell. Now we can switch to a player head. Put a player head on the very front of the fuel tank here. Next to that, we're gonna put a crimson sign to be our fuel gauge on each side. Make sure they're sideways like this. Then on the top of the fuel tank, we extend out a row of anvils to the end, and same thing on each side. This will be the locomotive's air tanks. Now we're gonna come in with a chain here. We're gonna put one there, and we're gonna have to come on here and put one in between the fuel tank and the truck, one here, and make sure it's going the right way. I was having some trouble here. So in order to do this, we're actually gonna have to come around here and crouch to place it. So get one there and one up in between the wheel and the porch. One here, same thing here. We'll have to come around and crouch to place this one. And then one all the way up on that corner. Now we're gonna come in here on this third level up and start filling this all in in a row of five across going end to end. Now the underframe is finally complete and we can start working on the nose of the locomotive. Come on the front middle, two blocks back from the middle in a column of three red concrete. Then another column of three kitty corner on each side. On that side, another column. On this side, just one. Now kitty corner on the outside to that. We make a column of four here and a column of four on this side to be the outside of the cab. Then behind that, we put a bottom red one on each side, then switch to smooth quartz and frame it in like this. Above the smooth quartz, we're going to go ahead and put black concrete for the locomotive number. Then a column of four smooth quartz coming up on each side behind that to frame in the gap. In the gaps, light blue stained glass pane for the window on each side. Then we're going to come down and put a light blue stained glass pane on each side of the front and a red block of concrete in the middle. Above that in the middle, we take red concrete 
and we make this T-shape pattern. On the outside edge of the top, we put red nether brick stairs coming each way on the front here on each side and then fill the rest in with smooth quartz stairs right side up and facing outward on each side. Then we're going to fill in this top of the cab with smooth quartz blocks. You could also be using white concrete for this. I'm using the smooth quartz to give it a slightly weathered look. Now switch to red concrete, come to the back, two blocks in from the middle, and make a row of five coming up. And another column of five here, and another column kitty corner on each side. Come up behind the cab on the engineer side here, and then kitty corner in one, a column of two, smooth quartz, and then we start filling the rest in of smooth quartz, four blocks high, all the way to the back of the locomotive. And we're gonna do the same thing on the other side, four blocks high of smooth quartz, coming down the other side of the locomotive as well. Come behind the cab on the top here, and we're gonna put a row of three smooth quartz coming across the middle, right there. Now we're gonna take out blast furnaces, and we're gonna put a row of three sideways on each side like that. Smooth quartz to fill in the middle. Behind the blast furnaces here, we're gonna extend the smooth quartz out another five down towards the back of the locomotive here. And we can go ahead and fill that five in coming across. Now we come on the front with a smooth quartz slab and start filling in this top middle three like this over the cab. The GP30 has a very distinctive hump. Once we get to the back of the cab, we're going to continue on with smooth quartz slabs here, except now they're going to extend out five across to the edges of the locomotive. And we fill in this five with slabs coming to the back of these blast furnaces here. Five all the way across. So it looks something like that and it's sticking out on top. Then we make a row coming all the way back to where the smooth quartz ends on each side like this here, leaving the middle open. Now we can come to the back of the locomotive here and take out smooth quartz block. And we'll just fill in this middle row coming all the way forward till it meets up with this quartz. Now starting from the back, we're going to fill in these edges with bedrock to be radiator vents. And we're going to bring it all the way forward, stopping one block before that there. So one block out from that quartz and all the way to the back. And we can go ahead and fill in those two empty gaps with quartz blocks. Now we're going to build our fans. So smooth quartz slab in the middle, one block from the end, and make a fan shape. Skip a block in one slab, and then another plus shape. That middle one's smaller because there's a small fan there. Then in this middle, skip a block forward and make another fan shape in the middle of that open space like that. Now we're going to punch out the middle of our big fans here and put bedrock in them. So knock that out and get a block of bedrock down in there. Same thing on this fan and this back fan. Then we're going to put an iron trap door in the middle of all of them so it actually looks like a fan. Here I decided to knock out the smooth quartz for that small fan and replace it with a daylight sensor instead. Now we're going to take out white carpet and come on the top here and anywhere that nothing is built, fill it all in with white carpet just to make the roof look more uniform. So all around this fan and up in this gap all around this fan as well and make sure you get this little front C shape. Come up on front with a birch fence gate to be our horn. I tried to place it there, but I didn't like that. We're going to put it above these stairs here. Open one facing this way, and one facing this way to be the horn. Then Sue Line had this caution light on there, so one block back from the middle, put a slab and a flower pot to represent that caution light. Alternatively, you could also go ahead and take out a conduit to be that caution light and have it actually light up. It just depends on your taste. I'm going to leave mine just so there's light. Now take out a smooth quartz stair and we're going to work more on this dynamic brake housing. 
one in front of those blast furnace, place one facing forward, then three sideways polished black stone, then one facing outward of smooth quartz, and one facing backward of smooth quartz. So it looks something like that. And then we have to go over and do the same thing on the other side. So one right in front of the blast furnace, one upside down facing forward, three polished black stone brick, one outward facing smooth quartz, and one backward facing smooth quartz. That'll complete the GP30's distinctive dynamic brake hump. And put some carpet up on those stairs as well. Come up on this conductor side to be the blower housing. And we're going to come out with white stained glass pane in a row of four. Then another row, and we just keep bringing that all the way up. In all actuality here, where these blast furnaces go, I'm going to knock out those three of those and switch it to black just so it looks like the vents coming through. So knock out one, two, and three here and replace it with black stained glass. That looks a little better. Now we'll do our logo here. So skip a block over and a block up, make this backwards L shape and kitty corner to that one. Fill it with coal. That's how I do my S's at this scale. Skip a block and we'll ma make an O shape. Just knock out an O here. Skip another block and we'll go ahead and make another O. And we fill all those blocks we knocked out with coal. Same thing here. Fill it all with coal. So now we have our logo on that side and we'll come over and do the other side. As usual, I'm gonna build it backward this time so placement is correct. So we come down under this first blackstone stair and we'll go ahead and knock out the first O shape. Then we skip a block and we knock out another O shape here. Then we skip a block and make the S, so a backwards L and kitty corner one up. And then we'll fill out all those holes with coal block to fill in the logo on this side of the locomotive here. Come down to the back here, one block in front of the red and one block up, and close two trap doors to be some vents. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. Right in front of the red and one block up, two trap doors. And then next to it, we're gonna knock out a column of two and smooth quartz stairs stacked up. Come over and do that on this side as well. So knock out these two and stack up smooth quartz stairs just to be some more vents. Come down on the front with birch vents to be the railing. We come from the bottom, we raise it up by three, over one, up one, over one, and up one. Same thing here, we have it too high there, it comes over and down, and then over and down to connect to the bottom. And I just realized I forgot something on the front here, so I'm just going in and getting a block of red concrete real quick. So we put two red concrete here, and two red concrete there to raise it up to the height of the door. Now we can switch back to our birch fence and bring this up in a column of five and then we bring it over to connect to the cap. And we do the same thing on this other side as well here. So starting from the bottom, bring it up in a column of five and bring it over to connect up with the cap. Now on the back of the cab, we connect up at the bottom of the cab with our birch fence and we're gonna drag that all the way to the back of the locomotive here. When we get to the back, we bring it down to the bottom of these stairs here. Then this is like the front, coming from the bottom, up three, over one, up one, over one, up one. Then we do the same thing on the other side, starting from the bottom, come up three, over one, up one, over one, up one. In front of this, we start at the bottom and come up four, and then we start dragging that all the way up to the front of the locomotive here. So we have a handrail going all the way down the side. And when I got up here, I just realized I never built the stairs coming up to that door. 
so we need to do that real quick. So we're going to take out smooth quartz block real quick here. And we raise it up by two to the door, and then one down there so there's stairs. Now we can switch back to our fence, bring it over one, up one, over one, up one, and over two to connect to the cab. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take out a light gray stained glass pane to be a rear view mirror. Put it on the front there on this side, and the front here on this side. Now we'll go ahead and put on our doors, and I'm going to use a birch door because it's the closest to white. So a door here in the nose, and then we come around this side, and a door behind the engineer side of the cab here. Then we can do our number plates, so switch to a birch sign, and put your locomotive number on here. I'm using number 700 because the video I used for inspiration showed this locomotive. So a sign on each side, an item frame in the middle with a glowstone to be your headlight. If you want ditch lights, item frames down here with glowstone. Now we'll go around to the back of the locomotive and we'll start detailing that here. So on the top back, two item frames with glowstone for rear headlights. Then, down in this corner, we're going to knock that block out and put white wool. Then, birch signs with our locomotive number again on the outside edge and one block down. And do that on each side. Then, we can take out a ladder and run it up the left-hand side of the locomotive here. If you want rear ditch lights, put an item frame down on these fences with glowstone. Then, switch to white carpet. And anywhere on this rear end where nothing's built, fill that all in with white carpet. And then we can go ahead and start bringing the white carpet forward on this walkway, all the way up to the cab of the locomotive here. So fill that in, and then up on these two stairs. And then we can come around and do the same thing on this side. Just start bringing the white carpet forward on this walkway as well. And bring it all the way up to where that stained glass is. Then we can come around on front and do the same thing. So anywhere on the front nothing's built, fill in with white carpet and two white carpet up on these stairs on each side as well. Take out some birch buttons for marker lights and one on the top on each side of the nose. Then a handle next to the door to be the handbrake. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the interior. So come in the nose here go ahead and take out a smooth stone slab and make a stack of two coming up the middle like this and just keep bringing your stack of two all the way back here. Then on this side we bring a column of it all the way up to the windows on each side. Then we're gonna fill in this side until it's up to the level of the door here. Same thing right behind here and then same thing on this side. Stack it up with slabs till it's at the same level. Then we're going to use slabs here to make a little stairway going down. In the back, a sideways blast furnace and glowstone to light it up. Here and here, stairs for the seats. We put an item frame up there with a compass for a gauge and a lever for the engineer. Then we can come down these stairs here and we're going to put an end portal there to be a toilet and we'll go ahead and put a door right here as well. So now, our interior is all done, and we need to come out on the nose to fill that in. Come on top of the nose here and crouch, and put a string over that end portal and in that middle block. Then keep crouching, and that'll allow us to place carpet there, and then fill in the rest of the nose with red carpet. Now we need to make some window banners. So get out a loom and come into it here. And we're gonna take out a white banner with light blue dye. Make the top half light blue, and then switch to white dye and put a white border around it. Now a red banner with light blue dye, top half light blue, and then switch to red dye and put a red border around it. Now we'll go ahead and put our windows on the cab here. So take the red ones on the front here and here, and then the white one goes over here on this side. We can't really put a window on that side because that blower's there.
And there you have it, folks. We've completed this Sioux Line GP30 locomotive. And once again, thanks to Railfan Kyle for requesting that I make a Sioux Line locomotive. I hope you guys like it. This one is much improved over the last GP30 that I made. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And everyone have a great week. Stay safe out there.